Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Stacey. If anybody is joining me new here today, thank you so much. Uh, my slogan is Believable Brown Beauty. That doesn't mean you have to be brown to stay and participate. It just means that's the kind of makeup I do on this channel. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please keep watching. So today's makeup. This is actually kind of funny because um, I, let me just say what I'm going to do first. I am doing um, a recreation of Meghan Markle's bridal makeup and I know there's like a gazillion of these um, on the internet at the moment but they're all on fair skin and I haven't seen one on someone who's my skin colour so I thought I would do that today. I actually mentioned it in my live on Sunday and someone was like yeah I'd love to see you recreate that and then actually I was looking through my videos so I'm very analytical and I was like oh maybe my bridal makeup look was still too much because I'm quite comfortable wearing makeup and maybe for some people even that was too much and I was going to do a much more natural bridal makeup tutorial anyway and now I can do kill two birds with one stone. So that's what I'm gonna do for you today. Mm. I did contemplate wearing my wedding dress, but I thought if I spill any makeup on that, I will actually hate myself. So the best you're gonna get are my actual wedding earrings and a white t-shirt. Let's just pretend this is a dress for today. I think the most important thing for anybody getting married is skin prep. Skin prep on the day is as important. You need to make sure that you do everything you can to make sure your makeup looks as flawless as possible and lasts the whole day. First of all, I'm just starting off with some Fix Plus to hydrate my skin. That's the lavender one just because I like the smell of it. And then I'm using a moisturiser from Sicily. It's a mattifying moisturiser because um, brown skin, doing that kind of glowy makeup on brown skin is very different from doing it on fair skin. So our skin is much more reflective. So any little bit of gloss or shine immediately looks like way more than it actually is. I would never use I don't think I ever have and I don't think I ever will use like an illuminating moisturiser on someone with brown skin because it's, I used to explain this to people this way like when I was talking to clients and they would be like well why wouldn't you do that? Imagine you have like a white piece of paper and a black piece of paper and if you put a piece of silver on the white paper, like silver glitter, it's going to show up but it won't be that much of a contrast between that and the white but if you put it on the black paper, the same thing, it's going to look way more apparent because the contrast is so much stronger. It's exactly the same way with um, highlighting and glowing products on brown skin. Our skin, like this is just moisturiser on my skin and it looks glowy anyway, if I add another layer of moisturizing primer and then moisturizing lotion and then moisturizing foundation or glue all with glowy um qualities to them i will just end up looking oily so i avoid doing that and this is a mattifying moisturizer and my skin is still really light reflective so i'm taking my makeup forever step one primer and i'm just going to use this to prime the parts of my face that i know get particularly oily so for me that is like the sides of my nose definitely my chin and just really work this in and you can feel it it starts to change and you can see it's killing the shine on my face and on the center that's fine I don't need any glow here really so just keep working this in I'm just taking a little mascara wand or a spoolie just to brush up my brows first and then I'm going to fill them in and today I have mixed these two which is the Dip Down Fluid Line and the Maybelline Lasting Drama Gel Eyeliner. And I'm gonna mix those two colors together to make a dark, like coffee colored brown and use that to fill in my brows. My brows. I did this in my last video and I quite liked how it looks, so that's why I'm doing it again today. So first of all, let's start with Struggleina. And I really loved Megan's brows. They weren't overly groomed. So you could tell she had like, it looked like she had a powder product in them but they weren't too done. They were structured and neat, but not like, they didn't look stenciled, you know? They looked believable. I like the idea of using these products in the brow because they're both really long wearing. So most of the products that I'm gonna to use today are gonna to have like that long wear claim. Cause that's definitely something you should look out for if you want to do your makeup yourself or you're having an artist do it for you make sure that they're using things that last long and I'm trying not to make them super neat I'm trying to get out of that habit and then just taking that brush and brushing it up again to soften it still this brow is always so much easier to do then for concealer I'm using my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in Amand 
and she didn't have much concealer on either like she was not cakes and bakes it was definitely my type of makeup it was actually probably less than what I would do and it was quite refreshing to see a lot of people were dragging her and saying that her makeup was really basic and her dress was really basic but I just felt like she just totally owned her moment um I am not a royalist at all I never really pay attention to things like this but I was cracking up watching that um service especially <laughs> Bishop Michael Curry that took the royals to church and um sorry back to my point I just really loved the way she held her composure you know she knew the eyes of the world were on her on that day and she could have tried to dance you know jump through hoops and wear things that people thought she should wear because you know she's now marrying into the royal family but she just really owned her own style it took so much confidence to wear such a minimalist makeup and such a simple dress and still look so beautiful it just showed me like how confident in herself she was and I think it was quite Mm, quite inspiring and quite empowering as well you know to know that even though she kind of made a statement like even though I'm marrying into the royal family like I'm still going to be me and I love that about um her makeup and her dress on the day I don't know if it was Daniel Martin that did it or if he gave her a lesson and she did it herself on the day but whoever did it her makeup was gorgeous right so now we're moving on to skin so she did have a really evident glow but I'm going to have to adapt this for brown skin because, you know, I can't just take strobe cream and put that all over a brown girl's face because she will end up looking greasy. So I'm just taking my Giorgio Armani Fluid Shear in number 10 and placing that in the high points of my face. I'm going to take it a little bit underneath this brow and connect those two. A little bit over my concealer. I quite like doing that actually. Then I'm taking a damp Real Techniques sponge and just blending that in. I'm going to put a tiny bit on the bridge of my nose here. And I'm just going to go back with my concealer brush and blend this through again. Now Megan is really fortunate she doesn't have dark circles but I do. So I'm just going to tap on a tiny little bit of concealer in the deepest part of my eye bags and I'll blend that at the end. I'm going to do a tiny bit of colour correction now. Make sure you do all the colour balancing first and then that way you can wear a much lighter base. I'm taking this brush from Backstage Beauty, it's the foundation buffer, and I'm just spritzing my brush, and I'm going to use this to buff this colour corrector into this part of my face. Now, I don't really have that much pigmentation. Some women of colour do have it stronger, but even for me, I notice when I can be bothered to do this extra step, it does make my makeup look nicer. It just helps to balance out the lower half of my face. Then I'm taking my Cover FX Power Play foundation and the colour I'm using is G100. I love this foundation. I've only taken a tiny pea size amount, not much. I'm going to use my finger first and tap this on. Spritz my brush again and that'll just help sheer out the foundation and just buff it in. And on Megan's um, makeup you could still see her freckles through so I am not trying to cover every single imperfection that I have you know I have a few scars on the side of my face that may still show through but I'm going to leave them because it definitely made her makeup look more realistic and I'm just taking the tiny bits of foundation that I left on the brush and stippling that over the highlight that I did on the cheekbone a little bit on the bridge of my nose and on this side as well I'm taking a tiny bit of my sheer glow and the colour I'm using is Khartoum which is much darker but I have a darker forehead so I'm going to use that and mix it in with the power play just to create a colour for my forehead. Take the same brush and just buff that in. Then I'm just taking my beauty blender with no product on and I'm just going to bounce this over the top to pick up any excess foundation. I haven't put that much on so there shouldn't be much and just to help everything blend in a bit more. And I put hardly anything on my nose. I've got a few sunspots or 
I don't know if they're freckles but I've got a few like weird brown marks on my nose and I have purposely left them uncovered so that it looks more realistic. I'm now going to go back and blend in this concealer and it should lift this a tiny bit more. Moving on to the eye makeup. So when I was looking at pictures of Megan, I couldn't really see what was going on on the eyelid because she's got quite deep set eyes and her lash line is really close to her crease. It just looked like a smoky eye. And it was, as far as I could see, it was a matte brown and that's what I'm going to copy on myself. It's a bit difficult because my eye shape is not the same as hers. She has the kind of eye shape that I've always like really loved. I remember I used to look at my cousin who has exactly the same kind of eyes as her and be like, oh, I wish my eyes looked like that. But her eyes are quite flat on the bottom and round on the top and they're a bit slanted as well. So she's actually got quite like a Disney princess kind of eye shape. Whereas mine are like equally round on the bottom and the top. They're almond shaped but they're round top and bottom, whereas her hair are straighter on the bottom. And my eyes aren't deep set, so you can see I have a lot of space between my lash and my crease, whereas Megan's lash line is really close. So I'm gonna try and copy this the best I can. I'm gonna keep it true to what I saw. There was no shimmer on the day, so I'm not gonna use any shimmery eyeshadows, and let's get this smoky eye going. I'm using this um, eyeshadow crayon from Beauty Pie in the color Choco, and I'm just gonna blend that onto my lid first of all and take it all the way up to my socket line. I'm taking an essential crease brush from Real Techniques and just blending that edge away. Now I'm taking a clean 224 and just working that edge even more. Just get rid of that there. And do the same on the other eye. Clean 224 again. Then I'm taking some coffee eye pencil from MAC and I'm going to work this into the lash line because it looked like her lash line was darker than the actual lid. So I'm just going to build this up in layers. So first of all go in with coffee and kind of take that halfway across the lid and blend that through. Taking a pencil brush from MAC and just working that in. And you can see it's a bit stronger on this eye than this one. And do the same here. Then I'm taking a black coal pencil and I'm just going to use this right at the lash line. And really work it into the roots and make sure the roots of my lashes are completely black. Now I know Megan didn't use or it didn't look like she had black on, it looked like she had dark brown. But you have to take into consideration my skin is much darker than Megan's. So where she could wear a dark brown and it would give enough definition, on me you can see I've used even coffee eye pencil and on a fairer skin that looks almost black and on me it's just a soft brown. So I'm having to use this black to intensify the depth of colour at the lash line because hers was really quite strong. Even though it was brown, you, there was a definite darkness to the lash line. It kind of looked like a smoky liner so that's what I'm trying to emulate here. And I'm taking Saddle Eyeshadow from MAC just to set everything. And I'm using a 221 brush from MAC as well. I'm taking that cold pencil and I'm actually going to tight line, which I hate doing. But Megan had a real lash focus to her look. And this little step will just make my lashes look fuller and darker at the root. So ooh, I'm just going to grin and bear it. Oh, and now my eyes are all watery. So I'm going to move on to something else for a little while whilst my eyes just settle. Right, I am taking this colour here. We all know that Stacey loves a lipstick as a cream blush, so I'm going to use this colour here. It's Kiss Me Coral from Revlon, and I'm going to use that as my blush today. I'm just going to take my fingers and tap that on. Now, Megan's blush was really, really subtle. She looked like she had hardly anything on. So, as you can see, I'm really blending this in. So I just want a hint of colour. I don't want it to look like I've actually got any makeup on there. 
So I'm going to go back to my eyes because they seem to have calmed down now. I'm using my extended play mascara in Giga Black first and just get a smaller mirror. And I love to use this mascara first to give maximum definition. It's really good for creating a defined fluttery lash. And I'm not sure she had mascara on her lower lashes, so I'm just going to quickly check. Let's get a little picture up and see. Mm, yeah, she looks like she's got a tiny bit of mascara on the lower lashes. So I'm just going to do a tiny bit. And I'm keeping it really close to the root of the lash. And just gently kissing the brush, hardly anything going on because it was definitely more on the top lashes. Before I forget, I'm going to set my brows. I'm using the MAC Waterproof Pro Longwear Brow Set in Brown Ebony. Okay, now I'm going to move on to lips. So Megan's lip colour was a really soft pink with, it didn't really have any shine to it, there was no gloss, there wasn't any evident lip liner. However, my lip shape is different, my lip, uh, my lip colour, my natural lip colour isn't pink. And so I'm going to create a soft pink colour that would work on my skin tone. So I'm taking my Costa Rich, I'm really loving this at the moment, my Costa Rich eye pencil, and I'm going to use this as a lip pencil all over. And I'm just going to use my fingers for this to blend it in because I want it to look really soft. Then I'm taking Mer, this colour here, and I'm going to use my finger again just because I want it to be really soft and I'm going to use that on top of the lip pencil. And that's how I would do a soft, like rosy pink on a darker skin. You'd need the brown pencil to give it some depth and some weight because my lips aren't naturally pink. Some black people do have naturally pink lips, but I don't. So for me, using a brown pencil underneath makes it much more believable than just putting the lipstick on its own. And I'm actually going to kiss some of it off. There, so it's super soft, like a stain, because it hasn't even looked like makeup, honestly. It was really, really quite stunning. Now I'm going to move on to lashes because I noticed she had quite a little kick to the corners of her eyes. So I'm just taking some Duo Glue, a black one, and I'm using these Ardell individual lashes. I'm being really extra because I didn't even use lashes on my own wedding day. I don't ever wear lashes. So this is going to be quite interesting for me. So I'm just going to take my tweezers, get some glue on the end. I'm just going to wait for them to set before I try and move them. But you can see it's add, added more flutteriness to the corner of my eye. I'll do the same on the other eye. <laughs> Left handed problems. Gosh, how am I going to. It's so much harder doing this eye. Maybe I'll put my arms this way round. You can tell I don't wear lashes, right? And now I'm going to go and adjust them. So that they sit the right way and I'm just pulling them down because my own lashes have got a really strong curl to them and they're very good at pushing other lashes off so I'm just having to really bend mine down to make sure that the individuals that I've put on sit properly that's so weird I never see I've never I haven't worn lashes in about six years seven years maybe even longer so it's kind of weird to see me with lashes on Finally, I'm just going to set my face. So I'm taking my dark mineralized skin finish and I'm just going to use this to set underneath my eyes. Then I'm taking my Cover FX Matte Setting Powder in the color Deep. 
And this is the Eye Blender brush from Bobbi Brown. And I'm just using this to set everywhere else. So I want it to be matte in the central part of my face. End of my nose. Middle of my forehead. And now I'm just being extra, but I'm taking the Danessa Myricks Evolution Powder in number five. This powder is a little bit, I don't know if it's, if it's gonna pick up on camera, but it's quite red. So I'm gonna use that for my forehead, just so it's not ashy if I use the other one. Let's take a tiny bit of that and work it into my palm. And just blend that around the hairline. As you can see, it's adding a tiny bit of warmth to my skin but setting everything at the same time. And then I think I'm just gonna sweep a tiny bit of this, not as contour, but just to give a bit of structure to the face there. So guys, there you have it. This is my recreation on Meghan Markle's bridal makeup. I really want to do like my little roll that I do with my hair and make my hair look a little bit more zhuzhed, but I have to wait for my piercing to heal. So I can't put any pressure on this side of my head for the next couple of months. So you just have to take my regular schmegular ponytail. But yeah, and um, that was a really fun look for me to do. Um, I hope it helps. Maybe there's a bride that's looking for something even more natural than the one that I've done before. And maybe this will help. I actually quite like the lashes. I never wear lashes, I haven't worn them in about seven years, maybe even longer than that, but I kind of like the feline pull and the little bit of weight it gives to the corner of the eye, so that was quite fun to do. And you can see, even though um, I have got a glow, I have very strategically used mattifying moisturiser, primer and powders to make sure that I don't end up looking like a grease ball, because that can happen so easily on brown skin. If you're not paying attention and you're not putting the products in the right place, using um, a luminizing moisturizer all over is just going to make us look shiny so i hope that was helpful if you don't already please follow me on my instagram i'll leave my handle for you here i do lives on sunday mornings at 9 30 gmt so if you want to see how i do makeup in real life in real time you can follow me there and send me your questions and just come along and have a chat thank you so much for watching please don't forget to like comment share and subscribe and i'll see you on the next one bye